All right, the Mr. Beast bandwagon jumping and piling on. <clears throat> I didn't even know what Mr. Beast was anything until just a, a few weeks ago when the whole uh, Chris Tyson thing came out and he was on this channel. And my son's 13, fixing to be 14. And I'm like, you know about... He's like, yeah, I know about that. I was like, well, I've never seen it. I was going to look at it. He said, don't. I said, why? He said, well, it's goofy, whatever. You know, he said, D -d you don't want to look at it, you know. So I discovered that it's... It's geared to children. Probably, I think... I mean, all those kids playing Fortnite and anywhere from nine... The 15 is his demographic age group. Um, I did, I didn't watch any videos. I've just seen clips, but I went to his channel and, and looked at the all the thumbnails and all the thumbnails are colorful and it's all geared to kids. It's game shows. It's all of this stuff. Um, he has 300 million subscribers. So is that 300 million? children or because he's had the channel for so many years a lot of these kids that were uh subscribing to his channel were 13 14 years old now they're 20 21 like the case of the guy with chris tyson he's now a grown-up but he was um like 13 14 or whatever and on discord if you guys don't know what Discord is, it's for gaming mostly. I have a Discord channel because I play Skyforge. I haven't played in a, in a couple of weeks. I've been busy, but um, I've got some videos on my channel I've, I've played. Uh, there have been some young kids that hopped on the game and wanted to play. And I'm playing with adults. Most, most adults play the game I'm playing, which is Skyforge. It's like 99 or 95% adults. And so, and these people talk, they talk ugly. <laughs> it can get brutal. You know, they're just, in, they're having adult conversations. Uh, not necessarily that it's nasty. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying when I'm playing, you know, they're dropping F-bomb. They're, they're cussing, they're talking, and, you know, we're just playing and this kind of stuff. So, and it's, it, even that's inappropriate. Where are the parents? So this 13-year-old, they're in charge of uh, handling the Discord, I guess. And uh, Chris Tyson's having this uh, inappropriate conversations with him. And I could totally see that happening. Because I've seen some crap on Discord. Uh, different channels. It's like uh, children shouldn't be on there. Or if they are, it should be a channel where it's uh, monitored by somebody. To keep it clean and uh, respectful. But there's been that controversy because this guy worked for, for Mr. Beast. So I'm, I'm discovering all of this just the last uh, week or two. Something like that. So I've been looking at a lot of this stuff because this guy, it's, it's he's either the, like the number one person on YouTube. Which is insane. He made like over 300 million last year. Um, it's just, it's just wild, you know, uh, he's found a niche, it works, the kids like it, they stay, obviously, uh, the guy that, uh, what his name is, Lava something, uh, was the, the child in question, he's a, he's a grown-up now, <laughs> I mean, is he still subscribed to Mr. Beast's channel, so all these people who were, uh, grown, I guess, a lot of people just don't go and clean out their, their uh, subscribers, if they're not watching them or, or whatever, or he just still enjoys it because it's, it's part of his childhood. So he's he could have long-term subscribers that are going to stick around and stay. Um, but this guy used to work for him, Dog Pack 404. And you could say that maybe, maybe he is a you know, he's pissed off, he ex-employee, they let him go, and they never specified why. But he comes out and he starts saying all of this stuff <clears throat> about him. Um, 
let's check it out. Let's check it out. Let's see if I can get this lined up. But uh, he uh, now he's under fire as well because there is I've only seen one comment that he was in that discord chat okay so and they were talking about chris tyson's genitals and how big they are and keep in mind they are in a chat with 13 14 year olds and mr beast chimed in right now y'all could go google that uh, a lot of people, Osmond Gold, um, a lot of the Quarterling. He's uh, he's posting a lot of a lot of these gamers are talking about it. Uh, a, a lot of people should be talking about it. He's the most popular person on YouTube. Why wouldn't other YouTubers be talking about it? Because it's like, wow, this is crazy, you know. Um, that so he's. If he's not, he should be under investigation for that because he knew about it. He knew that Chris and them were talking ugly in that chat, and he chimes in with them, talks ugly too. And it was nasty, not just ugly, just it was that's nasty, right? Talking about somebody's privates. That's just nasty and inappropriate. Boom. Um, but this is something different that he's being attacked and they've already sent out cease and assist letters uh to to some people to, to make them stop i mean because from this guy this dog guy dog pack 404 put up this video and this video already has 7 million views 7.9 almost 8 million views and he posted this on july 24th do you think attention is the most valuable currency in the world? Well, of course. If you could post something and everyone in the world would watch it, you'd be the most powerful man on earth. We're not promoting gambling. I think people are going to see this name. Well, the guy who just money. throws away millions of dollars on YouTube videos is a gambler. Who would have thought? It's called pointless gambling in people's lives. They don't have to pay anything to enter the gym. This is legal. I don't get it. Hundreds of forged or fake signatures. Honey schemes are great up until they just go bust. So you see where this is going. He's going to call them out for, for gambling. He's specifically targeting children. Uh, hi, I wanted to provide some context to this video. I'm a former Mr. Beast employee, and today I am alleging that the company uh, rigged videos and uh, did illegal lotteries and sold fake signatures. I, I would consider that fraud, okay? Thank you. Enjoy the video. <laughs> Man. What? Why? Was that for effect? I mean, did you see the pupils in his eyes? It's like, bro. <laughs> But here, it's a little more subtle view of him. So what what's going on with that? Like, maybe was he nervous that he was fixing to do this? So he's like, hey, I'm going to do this video, and I'm calling him out for gambling. And, you know, and so he's all like, oh, no. I'm, in the back of his mind, he's like, I'm, I'm going to get sued. I'm done. <laughs> so I'm just saying all this real quick. I mean, that was my thought when, when I saw it. So this is part one into my investigation into Mr. Beast. Uh, I recorded this before the Chris stuff came out. I was also going to come out about the Chris stuff probably in part two or three. Because um, I see a lot of people saying like, oh, if you knew, why didn't you come forward? Why didn't you go to the authorities? Well, I was going to come forward. And also like going to the authorities isn't going to work because what are you going to say? Like you heard rumors that this person was this way or that, you know, there's obviously evidence of like the shad based stuff. Like that's been out for a while. People have internally known at the company that like Chris is kind of a a potential minors attracted person and, and the company protects her and minor attractive person the company the company knows and he said she referring to him chris 
which is he changed his name to Ava. He wants to be called Ava. So Chris, he's referring to Chris as she, and says, a minor attracted person. What the hell is that? I mean, we know what it is, but it's it's stupid. What is this, doublespeak? Oh, man. 1984 doublespeak? So you can't really say what it really is. But he's using the correct the correct pronouns, I guess, or correct speech, where she, they knew she was attracted to a minor, to minor persons. They were protecting her, and they protected her as long as they could. Jimmy knew, her. everyone knew, so, you know, which I... Uh, and he's saying Jimmy, Jimmy is Mr. Beast, by the way. Jimmy is Mr. Beast. So he's saying... Now, when all this first came out, and I saw all of this, and I'm like, well, how would he not know? I mean, he's wor been working with this person for several years, side by side. I mean, boom, right? They're on all these, these, these videos, hours upon hours upon hours, and then he transitions, and, and Jimmy, which is Mr. Beast, was all like, I support you. If anything, parents should be mortified that this this man, Jimmy, Mr. Beast, in, is influencing our children. They're watching it to, to a tune of 300 million. And if you go to his channel and then look at his views, it's anywhere from 100 million to 200 million per video. So let's say he got 10 million. That's a slow day. That's a bad video. I mean, someone like me, if I got 10 million views, I'd be like, holy smokes. You know, <laughs> me, I'm nobody, right? But it's insane. So he's influencing our children. And this comes out, comes out as a trans. He's supporting them. Uh, and then this guy is still in the videos as a trans. Working with him. So how would he not know? about him being inappropriate with minors. I think that's more of a red flag than anything I'm gonna reveal in this video, but, um, you know, there's messages happening like Mr. Beast discords and, yeah, I don't know, it's a mess when like Mr. Beast contestants are being exposed to like minor attracted persons and the company's protecting them. You know, there's a big emphasis at the company of like, how to manipulate children, like understanding their psychology and everything, and like seeing that that's sort of used in weird ways. And you know, there's been like parasocial relationships and, you know, encouraging like almost children simping for these people. And, you know, maybe that's as nefarious as it gets, or maybe it goes deeper. Anyway, here's an old podcast clip of Jimmy explaining that he knows that his audience is young. Oh, which is an old clip. You could say like his audience. He knows his audience is young. It's actually brilliant that he has discovered a formula that does attract kids. But obviously, he's got he's got the formula. It almost reminds me of um, the Nickelodeon um, shows. They were like the rabbit trails. They'd have the kids uh, run up, not rabbit trails, but obstacle courses. Obstacle. I'm thinking of a uh, gerbil. <laughs> gerbil trail um the obstacle courses and and different things like that the the old nickelodeon it has that feel to it all his thumbnails do it has that that type of nickelodeon feel but brought to youtube and he has just capitalized on it to the tune of over 300 million followers it's actually brilliant but like he said, is there nefarious reasons? Do, do they did this? So now these other people can pull in these young, these young children? I don't know. Screw up. I would say he's gained most of his audience since then, and his content's only gotten younger. Uh, also, this clip really just shows that, like, he understands that YouTube analytics are bullshit because he can try to use that as a defense, but he knows. Uh, so here's that clip, and then I'll get into the video. The average demographic is, what, 13 through 17? Is that the biggest spike in your analytics? Well, I mean, mine's horseshit. It says, like, 18 to 24, but I know all my fucking viewers are little kids. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, I, I feel like it's a lot like that because, you know, little kids lie about their age or they're on their, you know, like... But, well, yeah, then I have, but, like, a fucking massive account. one for, like, the 40-year-old range because all the fucking idiots are on their parents' account. Now, Mr. Beast intentionally manipulates these children's vulnerable minds for profit using uh, three simple steps which closely align with the three major types of behavioral learning. Step one is getting the viewer to associate the brand with trust and authority. Mr. Beast videos are real, and he's a great guy that gives away big rewards to his loyal followers. I will show you irrefutable evidence in a minute that his videos are in fact fake. Step two is showing the viewers that when people interact with Mr. Beast in a way that benefits Mr. Beast, when they do what he tells them to do, they win big rewards. Is he subscribed? You are subscribed. Here's some money. Have a good day. Some of them feel like I just walk around with a thousand dollars. It's like, oh, thanks for watching my videos. Hit that subscribe button because you might bump into me in real life and it might make you a lot of money. When people... I mean, do we care if videos are fake? I don't. I mean, if it's entertaining, I don't care. But, you know. Or devout followers of Mr. Beast, they get rewarded. And step three is finally calling on the viewer to act in some way that benefits the brand. Promising big rewards in return. Now it's your turn to do what Mr. Beast tells you and you will win big rewards. But you actually won't unless you're famous or friends or family of a Mr. Beast employee. So young impressionable viewers are made to believe that Mr. Beast is a trusted authority who can give them big rewards. These young viewers are explicitly shown that dedicated followers or random subscribers like themselves are winning big rewards when they do what Mr. Beast tells them. These young viewers are explicitly told repeatedly that if they subscribe, if they buy products or act in some way that benefits the brand, they will win big rewards. Trust Mr. Beast, watch him help others, contribute to his cause, and one day he'll help you too. That's the formula. Subscribe for a Lamborghini and to make- It's quite the formula. Subscribe. You could be in one of these subscribe right now. And you might get you next video. 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 What's a 14-year-old going to do with a car? Here, Mom, a one-year car. But children don't don't think like we do. We, 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 we usually, most of the time, can smell bullshit a mile away. Also, wait, seriously, we always fly subscribers down. They never fly random subscribers down. Mr. Beast fakes his videos in ways that are worse than you realize. Uh, I say that because he's been exposed for faking videos before and the common response is why does it matter if the videos are fake they're just meant to be entertainment a large part of mr b's brand is the fact that he doesn't fake videos i remember when i first started seeing your videos i was like this shit's gotta be fake oh like, yeah it's a huge so, problem for us now i actually have to dial back my content sometimes just so people think it's real but also if, if what we had to film was scripted you know because what we do is not scripted so you have to plan for a bunch of variables that you can't control blah blah if what we did was scripted Holy shit, this stuff would be easy to pump out. Have you ever faked a video? No. But this train track is CGI. Well, that's that's the rub, right? Well, I could give a shit if it's, if it's fake. It's entertainment. It's entertaining the kids. I mean, I haven't heard anything in there. Now, maybe I need to watch a few of his videos, but as far as I know, there's nothing inappropriate in the video itself other than it being fake in a lot of the videos so that right there is you know kids are being entertained I, parents probably hey it's you know it doesn't seem inappropriate but we'll get to that in a minute with the parents knowing what their kids watch but him saying it's not fake and then now we're finding out they are fake that's a problem I mean, nobody cares if it's if it's fake, but you claim that it wasn't, and there's the rub.
CGI, these bus wheels are CGI, this explosion is fake, this shredder is CGI, this car is digitally lifted, this pit is fake, this guy is fake, uh, this raccoon is a paid actor, <laughs> this island costs more than a dollar, this city is not abandoned, these buildings are CGI, but it's not your only way out, you can literally get an Uber to the airport for $20. That's not a lurker, it's just a guy. This whole room is fake, this contestant is an actor and a secret employee at Mr. Beast, Adam got through this fake door twice, this line is scripted, this action is scripted, uh, in fact pretty much all the videos with Mac are scripted. So they're all scripted. So he's claiming. Mr. Beast still says that they're not. There you go. You did it! Yeah! What we did was scripted. Holy shit, this stuff would be easy to pump out. Let's talk about Mac for a second. We will die. Do you understand that? <laughs> I found public records showing that Mac moved from California to Greenville, North Carolina, where Jimmy is located, back in August 2023, two months before he appeared as a contestant. According to a former Mr. Beast employee, this is around the time when Mac started working full-time on the editing team at Mr. Beast. Also, he didn't just move into any old house, he moved into a million dollar mansion. Now, I'm not gonna dox him, only some asshole would do something like that. After doxing and bullying the pilot some more like a f***ing douchebag, turns to Eric and says, how do I fly this thing? And Eric just starts pushing butt. But I did find pictures of this mansion online, so I fed them into ChatGPT and asked it to create similar images. And this is what it came up with. And it's honestly not that far off. His 6,000 square foot million dollar mansion comes with a movie theater and seven bathrooms. What are you gonna spend the $800,000 on? I mean, my life's changed now. Yeah, I'm sure that $800,000 is really gonna change your life gonna pay for my taxes to this million dollar home I've got and the water bill I'm gonna have because I got seven bathrooms. That 800,000 is gonna come in handy. Max is a nice car. Tell me, where are we right now? Uh, we're in the place that uh, we drove to a few minutes ago. Uh, Mac, let's, let's cut the shit here. What have you been doing for like the last year? A lot of family stuff. What kind of family stuff? Just like, uh, you know, playing catch with my dad, you know. For a year? What do you, how do you make money? <laughs> how are you, uh, like, surviving? Basically, like, my main strategy is I, I go to, like, uh, like grocery store type places. Grocery store type places? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I basically, I basically, I'll do it when I get there. I usually get, like, like a, an amount of food that feeds like a week or so, right? With, with what money? The money that I made. How did you make it? Huh? Where, yeah, well, listen, you're getting too caught up in the details. Still figure it out. Still figure it out. We will die. Do you understand that? <laughs> During this time lapse on the fourth day of seven days stranded at sea, you can clearly see there's no one in the shelter. These are their empty beds. But after a hard cut, magically five people are awake, and two of the boys have bright yellow raincoats that they didn't have when it rained on day two. And after standing the whole night completely soaked, you didn't spend the night soaked, Jimmy. You slept on the production yacht. It's ironic because this is one of the videos where they claim that they don't fake things. But no, we have to be the real channel that doesn't fake things. In this video, this wink was added in post. In fact, 58 was actually on the far opposite side of the room from 42, and he just didn't hear him. This whole revenge storyline was added in post. Multiple shots show how timers are edited in post. Timers are edited in post. Timers are edited in post. They also manipulated contestants' audio in post. So we got 15 minutes. In general, if anything happens last second, it's fake. Or if you can hear someone's voice but can't see their mouth. So he's hammering at home. It's fake, fake, fake. That's, that's what he's doing. Health, the audio could easily be added in post. I literally think I'm gonna kill you. And yes, this lie detector video was also fake. Have you ever faked a video? No. Fake that lie. Uh, it's still real to me, damn it! Okay, so Mr. Beast fabricates some contestant dialogue and timers and movements and storylines and uses a bunch of shitty CGI, but who really cares? I mean, the videos are just for entertainment only, right? I mean, it's not like he's ever rigged the results of a challenge. That would be impossible because he films with hundreds of random subscribers is right? Wrong. Let's look at this video. Not only were the results of this video completely scripted, but the contestants are not random subscribers. So many people had jobs. Oh, that contestant had to get out for her job? I guess you forgot she's your hiring manager. I actually read- Ooh. A hiring manager? Oh my gosh. That's a big no-no. That's a big no-no. Having people that work for you in the game. The hypocrisy knows no bounds, and the impropriety of the sheer accusation. I recognize a lot of people in this video, including Jimmy's own girlfriend. So yeah, the random subscribers you see in challenges are actually never random. They're almost always local to Mr. Beast, and oftentimes friends and family of Mr. Beast employees, or just the employees themselves. 
Now, this section is, he, he is factual that those people were in the video. They were. They were a part of it. So that he's not making up. And keep in mind that, you know, he doesn't work for them anymore. Is he a disgruntled employee? Possibly. I don't know. Or he's just a guy that says, hey, man, I'm just going to expose this, this, this guy. And when they do pull someone from outside of North Carolina, it's usually somebody who's in the industry, who's camera trained, who has built a following. <laughs> hey, anyone I'm friends with watching that wants 10 grand? They are never random subscribers. If you any one of my friends watching that just wants 10 grand? Well, damn, maybe I need to subscribe to Mr. Beast and start watching him. <laughs> I mean, what are the chances? You subscribe, you will not win a million dollars. And what's even worse is that the results of this video were completely scripted. According to a former Mr. Beast employee, it would have been a PR problem if the boys had won by a lot. And because so many of the female contestants were Mr. Beast employees who got out immediately, production stepped in to actually make the results of the challenge closer. Uh, you can actually see some of this happen on camera, like when Jimmy pays one of the boys $10,000 to leave, which is twice as much as the actual prize money, uh, but doesn't make the same offer to the girls. That right there is the jig is up. You just paid the best guy on that other team 10,000 bucks to leave. Yeah, that's that's called rigging the game. The boys were blowing you out of the water. I paid the one guy who knew how to solve them to leave. Now, if you don't win, that was all for nothing. At another point, he gives the girls a camera drone so they would have been able to see how many boys were left. It doesn't work out, but see <laughs> how much they're willing to help them all. <laughs> the camera drone smacked into the wall. On camera, I'm willing to believe that they did, in fact, help them off camera. You know, apparently, at the end, they were only monitoring the boys to see if they stepped on the red line and not the girls so that the girls would win the challenge. Wow. And to be clear, obviously, the girls had an unfair start with having so many Mr. Beast employees get out immediately. You know, I think they all did deserve $5,000 for that, but also the boys should deserve a fair chance at winning, I think. I think that's the expectation when you run a game show. But hey, that was a while ago, so I'm just glad they're not doing another rigged boys versus girls video. Yeah, the expectation was, yeah, but you rigged it. That was on camera rigging. He paid he paid one of them to leave. It doesn't matter who if he just wanted the girls to win, it's supposed to be a, you're doing a game of boys against the girls. Okay? But you paid one of the guys. You it was totally manipulated. And giving him a drone to spy and all this goofy stuff. I mean. Video. So knowing that Mr. Beast likes the results to be close and that offstage producers can sort of influence how a challenge progresses, I want to show one more example. This is a real-time video, meaning that time elapses the same in the video as it does in real life. Now immediately the intro is sped up. <laughs> and the timer is clearly added in post, and he clearly touches the laser here, but whatever, let's assume that it's all real time. When he reaches the bottom floor, he has to turn these water valves. Now you can tell that these valves aren't actually connected to anything because the water flows out in an instant, and it happens when he's not even touching the valve. The contestant also goes back to the first valve, unaware that anything had happened. And he's now we already know all of this stuff is usually BS anyway, and they have to have safety protocols. This guy's in a tank of water. I mean, that's kind of a given though. He's still able to spin it. So the valve seems to spin freely and isn't actually connected to the flow of water. So you could assume that producers might be off camera with remote switches to trigger the flow of water. And assuming they've tested this, the producers might know how long it takes for the water to clear out of the room. So they can sort of decide on the fly how many turns of the valve it takes or just when to trigger the water in general to make the results close. And in this- well, they probably did all, they had to do all that anyway for safety reasons. Video, spoiler alert, the contestant wins the money. So rigging the challenge could be seen as a good thing, but there are many examples yeah, of contestants losing. And in traditional media, this kind of rigging is actually completely illegal. We always have the same person tie all the knots so that we know they've tied them at the exact same tension. 
I mean, we get down to inches. And then we have a standards and practices person. And if you don't know what that is, on any kind of a game show where there is a prize, you have to have somebody that ensures that it's fair. They are out there essentially to make sure that we don't do something that would favor one player or one tribe. I paid the one guy who knew how to solve them to leave. In my well, the thing is, is that that if you saw where it was on there, if you looked at it, it said for television. Now, I think this is uh, the Wild Wild West is the uh, the Internet. Right. The Internet's the Wild Wild West. And these regulations aren't uh, here yet. Now, I don't know if there could be legal actions. He's fixing to go over, because I have seen this video. He's fixing to go over the rules and stuff, but a lot of these rules are for, were for television and for radio. Uh, this is a whole new ball game. The internet is just... Ex more people watch the internet than they probably watched, listen to radio and TV back in the day. I mean, come on, everybody can, you got your cell phone, you got everything right at the touch of your fingers to, to get in touch with the world. So if, if these are going to, how is it going to affect uh, YouTubers, content creators, if they start adding more uh, rules and regulations applying to this, which I'm kind of leaning towards they do need to as far as a game. Right, and there's prizes involved, so there needs to be rules and stuff. Uh, I think probably in that aspect of it, it, it probably should be uh, somewhat somewhat regulated. Uh, let's get back to this. In my mind, I'm thinking it's a fair game, mm -hmm. but it's not. If they were having problems finding people, they can see kind of what area you're in. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And they came to my area many times, and I was in the smallest cupboard. <laughs> they had like big ones, medium ones, and small ones. I contorted this little four foot ten body into the smallest space, and I was in there for hours. <laughs> and they didn't even open the door because they were like, a person can't even fit in there. So they went in there oh and they God. opened all the cabinets, and my heart was like, oh, they're going to find me. They're going to find me. And then I could hear them saying, like, she's not here. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, she's not here. <laughs> the other thing that they said is, absolutely no climbing in the air vents or the ceiling mm -hmm. and they said it's because they do all their wiring in mm -hmm. the ceiling so i'm up here and i feel good about this spot if it was held accountable especially because this was a youtube original production mm. zach would have been eliminated for cheating he broke the rules and I guarantee you if i claimed if i climbed in the ceiling mr beast would eliminate me he was in the she he was in the ceiling and then they got so she got a lot of backlash and a lot of hate for that for that video when that when that happened but uh he was in the ceiling he broke the rules he said he wasn't but yet the guy in the ceiling wins and did you hear what she said she said that uh youtube helped him put this on so there's a lot of money involved. How far is this is going to go? How can how much can he be protected? I don't know. I mean, that man's got a lot of money. And he can afford these attorneys. So I think some of the Mr. Beast giveaways have been fake, uh, but I'll get to that later. So now that I've explained some of the ways that Mr. Beast lies to build trust with his audience, I want to go on to explain how he exploits that trust for profit through <coughs> running illegal lotteries, selling fake signatures, giving children diabetes, and more. A call to action is simply when you tell the viewer to do something, saying subscribe is a call to action. Early in his career, Mr. Beast found a better version of this where he takes a call to action and he adds positive or negative reinforcement to it. Now as adults, we can recognize that subscribe for a cookie is a joke. Uh, it's not a real offer, but again, Mr. Beast's audience is primarily children who may have authorities in their life that actually use sweet treats or video game detentions as forms of reinforcement. And you aren't born understanding sarcasm. Whatever the reason, these reinforced call to actions are more effective than just saying subscribe. Oh, but there's an even much better version. I, I agree. It's, 
it's some seriously awesome marketing, but in a heinous way. I mean, just a projection of his shows, of them having the games and stuff, but the propriety of teaching our children to gamble is a little nefarious. Version. The call to action giveaway. If you guys want to win a brand new PS5, all you have to do is subscribe to my channel. I can't believe people are still doing fucking giveaways. Holy <laughs> shit, it's so annoying. Stop this fucking shit. I'm so tired of it. Fucking 10 years of YouTube, people are still like buying subs for this shit. So over the next seven days, I'm going to be giving a thousand random people that subscribe a free Samsung Galaxy S24. How Dark, is this legal? I don't get it. All you, you have to do is subscribe to your channel. All you have to do to enter to win one of these phones is subscribe. It's a scam. Holy shit. I literally spent over a million dollars on these phones. And we literally found him one minute before Zach. I spent over a million dollars on these phones. All you have to do to enter is hit that subscribe button. Samsung, I just want you to love me. So yeah, that's what a call to action. A million dollars. I mean, I don't know how they can, maybe they can, these, uh, these computer tech guys get in, get in their business system, see if they sent out all of those phones, all you have to do is subscribe and you're going to get a brand new iPhone or a Samsung phone giveaway is at best they are a way to buy subscribers but much of the time they are legitimate scams either a youtuber doesn't actually give away a prize or in the case of these live streams they are illegal lotteries where the only way to win a prize is by making a purchase and obviously i'm not a lawyer so i'm just going to show you the law and then show you irrefutable evidence of what's being done and you can make your own conclusions the ftc defines a lottery as containing three elements a valuable prize random chance, and consideration, which can be time or effort, but in most cases is just payment. To successfully run a contest or a sweepstakes, you must eliminate one of these factors. A contest, for example, eliminates chance, and a sweepstakes eliminates consideration. In determining if any Mr. Beast giveaways have been illegal lotteries, we need to identify a prize, which is distributed through random chance and cannot be won without spending money. On August 2nd... But those laws or Matt for television and radio for decades. That was the standard because we, uh, we all don't remember all the game shows, Wheel of Fortune, Jeopardy, you know, uh, a lot of those other daytime, it, it, even from back in the 60s. Now, I don't know when they started it, but we all remember the dating game and all these other games. Uh, Goofy shows from the from the sixties up. Uh, even they had them. Even prior to that, they had game shows. Back in twenty twenty, Mr. Beast live streamed him and his friends signing limited edition shirts, celebrating forty million subscribers. Uh, and here are just some of the clips from that stream. For for those of you who are just joining, if you buy one of our limited edition uh, forty mil special shirts, we're celebrating forty million subscribers with a really big video. Then we will sign that shirt, and some of them will get random prizes like this. In 10 minutes, right, because we got to give them time to, to do their cart, we'll give two orders $500 each. Five minutes, someone's getting three grand in their Someone, order. In five you? minutes, we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to put $1,000 in a random order. Two minutes, newest order, gets $2,000. Good luck, everybody. So this was a six-hour live stream. Damn. Where are the parents? This man has made millions off a children's parent's credit card. Good Lord. Uh, they took it down off YouTube, but five hours of it are still up on their Facebook page. Uh, and during those five hours... Oh, and that, I believe that's been taken down off the Facebook page. I heard it the other night. I counted 46 illegal lotteries. These lotteries are also run poorly multiple times. They would say something like, buy in the next five minutes for a chance to win. And then seven minutes later go, actually, the newest order in 30 seconds is going to win. And They've been running cleanup. They took down uh, all the uh, Discord was posted. Uh, for, I think it was just up for just a couple of days, but a lot of YouTubers had uh, clipped them and went through them. I mean, there was like, 
I don't know, some crazy number, 5,000, who knows, some crazy amount of texts from, uh, on the Discord, uh, channel they had, and I don't think anybody, I don't know if anybody's actually literally gone through every single one, but the law should, obviously, the, the police should, with their investigation into the Chris Tyson's, uh, inappropriate, uh, grooming of children, but, um, They've took it down, the, all the Discord stuff, and then they took down, uh, the that was on a Facebook page, they took it down. So I think they've been just going around and just wiping out, doing cleanup, doing trying to do damage control. Five minutes, we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to put $1,000 in a random order. Hey, Daryl, don't we owe someone $1,000? We do. Yeah. So, all right. So, the newest order in 30 seconds, we are going to put $1,000 in your package. Stephen, uh, Stephen K. Okay. Could you imagine your kid, like, like at the ice? Remember when, well, I'm old. You'd hear the ice cream truck coming. Mom, Mom, I, uh, the ice cream guy, can I have a quarter? Yeah, now you need a couple of bucks. Yeah, a quarter. I could get two ice creams. <laughs> Running out there getting ice cream. But a kid's sitting at home on his computer, and he sees that. He goes running, Mom, Mom, Mom. Can I have your credit card? Because if I buy this shirt right now, I'm going to get $1,000 in my, or whatever he's throwing in there. All right, good night. I'd have said, told my, I would have laughed at him if he'd ever asked me that. I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm buying a $42 shirt. In the hopes of the guy's going to drop a hundred bucks or a thousand bucks in your in your order. Oh, Steve, Steve, and there is no second giveaway 30 seconds later, like Jimmy said. Uh, this is just one very shady giveaway. Uh, they just go on to talk about how Steven made a profit. Steven's a handsome name. We're proud of you, Steven. I counted 13 of these extra shady lotteries where they did not give the prize in the original time frame that they said. Okay, so we're going to put two iPhones in this pinata and we're going to give it to someone who orders. A I don't know if he could, if we could legitimately get that timing from watching this. Because who knows if he's got another guy in the back who's on a computer, he's his computer tech guy that uh somebody subscribed and then he all do 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 you know he pulls it up so so the shipment can go out now it's possible that it is shady they did wasn't in the time frame but again to be fair it could be possible that he has somebody taking care of that and i would hope that they would where again parents where are you what how is this possible these kids with all this money to spend. It's insane. The shirt in three minutes, five minutes. Buy a limited edition shirt or hoodie, and we're going to pick a random one in 10 minutes and give them $2,000. Have we done iPhones yet? Yeah. Oh, we did one. IPhone. Oh, wait. Hey, yeah. Daryl, first, actually, before we do that, we never picked a pinata. So these clearly fit the definition of an illegal lottery. These clips are also not out of context. No one ever said no purchase necessary. There's nothing in the description or on the website. At one point, Mr. Beast is informed that they ran out of PlayStations, and he says, are we trying to not sell merch? I think he made it clear. It, he didn't have to say no purchase necessary, I guess, because he's saying if you order a shirt, I'm going to drop a thousand bucks or I'm going to drop an iPhone in your order. And a 12 year old's like, mom, you know, so. I don't even know if that he needed to do that because it's obvious he's like, you buy the shirt, we're going to throw this this money in. But you got to buy the shirt, man. You got to buy the shirt or the hoodie. Uh, our city is sold out of PlayStations. We don't have any. We have to give away. <laughs> Are we trying to not sell merch? So he clearly knows that they're making more money by running these illegal lotteries. Another shady thing he did was constantly suggest that they're doing too many giveaways to make a profit. My guy over there doing the numbers is like, stop, stop please. Like, you do realize every time you give away an Xbox at a thousand dollars, you don't make money. I'm like, oh, I know we're not gonna make money. What are we doing, guys? We're gonna check after the stream and it's gonna be they're like, like oh, no. what a waste. Yeah, I know. We're gonna break neutral. When there was just no way they were ever even close to losing. Wow. 
wow. money on the stream. I don't know who this is, but you just got a pair of AirPods. Oh my gosh, we're not making money. Guys, <laughs> we need to stop giving everyone something. We just like, lost like seven. Almost grand. everything, almost everything that someone's bought, we put something in their package. I'm not gonna make so money. In five hours, they gave away about $50,000 worth of stuff uh, and sold over 50,000 t-shirts. Selling these t-shirts at- That's just insane. All these children. I don't think adults are buying this crap. Who, who grown up gonna walk around with a Mr. Beast shirt on? I mean, come on. Th these are kids buying this. This is some insane spending money from children. At $42 each, profit margin would be about $22. But even if they were making like $1 per shirt, they would still be fine. Uh, also, by my estimates, only one in every 1,600 orders actually won a prize. And I guarantee he has real-time analytics on his lap. I don't know how he can come up with that. I'm not a... If anybody out there is smart enough to figure that out, but I don't know uh, how we can quantify that. Top. He knows they make more money every time he says, Oh my god, guys, we're giving away so much stuff. We're not even going to make a profit. Please, don't you want me to make a profit? That's why he keeps saying it. Also, they just don't show how winners are picked. So it's probably not actually random. You know, humans have biases. Imagine Jimmy tells the guy off camera, Hey, pick a name right now. And he sees two names. One is easy to pronounce. One is not. This is. I think it would have been awesome. If they would have done that let's say one of you guys out there your kid bought a shirt and they pulled it up on the screen because they were running that was a live stream and they pull up they pull up his youtube page and him or have him on pop him on live i don't know if they could do that because you know that could be you don't know who's on, who's on the other end, but uh, but they could have popped up his page. I don't know. This is why lotteries are heavily regulated to ensure fairness. Also, obviously, you have to be 18 to play the lottery. It's gambling. Mr. Beast isn't just promoting gambling to children here. He's running the casino, and this isn't even close to the worst stream he's done. Four months later, Mr. Beast signed shirts again, but this time it was a 24 hour live stream with way more illegal lotteries. And by the way, the rest of these streams were taken down shortly after upload. So all I have is some old clips and Reddit threads talking about them. And now this stream did say, we are doing a ton of giveaways, no purchase necessary in the description. Uh, but to be eligible to win most prizes, you had to make a purchase. So would, yes. would you guys prefer would you prefer that we throw money in random orders or that we throw items? Look at all that money he's holding. That's crazy. You know, little kids watching that going, ooh, he's got so much money. He's Mr. Beast. I'm going to subscribe. I'm going to buy a shirt. Items in random orders. Yeah. Somebody screamed in chat, I want to switch. Hey, buy a shirt. In 30 minutes, we are giving away my car to someone that buys merch. Which each giveaway is its own independent event. You can't give one prize to someone who buys something and a different prize to someone in chat. The prize where you have to buy something is still an illegal lottery, which obviously Mr. Beast knows this, but you know, he's a, he's a poker player. He likes a little bluffery, a little plausible deniability, you know, pretending to be ignorant of the law. You know, YouTube's a little different than this. Um, yeah. Because YouTube, I can just do stuff like that. I can just be like, you know what? Pull up a database of 100 people that bought chocolate bars and pick 100 random ones. Got it. I think I can do that over here. I don't know. So mm. I don't want to say anything. And then someone be like, yeah, actually, that's illegal. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I could not find any. Now, I don't, I can't, like, did, why he was doing those streams, did he realize he was breaking the law? Because the FCC is not regulate YouTube again. I'm not excusing Mr. Beast at all. I'm just giving the benefit of the doubt where I think it it's it's be because the 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 total impropriety of it, him with Tyson and in that chat talking nasty, and then now this, you know, what's going on that y'all attract so many children? But did he know? That he was breaking the law as far as running the getting the shirts and putting the money in. I, I don't know. 
I mean, did, did, doesn't he have lawyers? The guy made over three hundred million last year, and he's been making millions for the past few years. So I would have think that some kind of team, and he works with YouTube. YouTube works with him. Would somebody not tell him, hey, this might be wrong? You're having people that work for you in the games. This could be, you know, this is bad. But nobody told him shit, apparently. Any way to enter the big Tesla giveaway without spending at least $42? And we're giving away a Tesla to someone random who bought stuff. They also gave away 24 tickets, which gave you the opportunity to be in a video. Again, most of these tickets, you had to make a purchase to win. One random person that buys in what time frame? 10 minutes. We're going to put this in someone's order that buys something. Okay, so he knows his targeted audience, which y'all heard earlier, because he goes, oh yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fucking, he, used, he dropped the F-bomb. He's like, yeah, they're all 13, 12, whatever. There's demographics. Why is he giving away a car? <laughs> if they're all just children. Oh, they can buy it, give it to their parents. I hope somebody digs and finds out if he actually gave that, if somebody, who won that car. And we're going to have 24 yeah. people. We're going to put them in 24 different circles. Million dollars on the line. Have some fun. You know what I'm saying? Also, this video never happened. There is no Mr. Beast video of 24 people in circles competing for a million dollars. Unless it ended up being 100 people in a circle competing for $500,000, but that's a smaller prize and much worse odds. So, like, did they just pocket the money or what? Hey, it's the pilot guy. Wait, he's about to be the first one out? That's unlike him. Even though you got out first, I still have a prize for you. Just wait here. Oh, first person out gets a car and it just happened to be your friend Mac. Another thing that just annoys me is Jimmy constantly says during these live streams that he's just doing this for fun because he loves giving things away. Oh, and I just like giving away stuff. It's kind of funny. Imagine you just lost a bunch of money at the casino and the owner comes out and he says, Guys, the reason I do all this, I just love giving away money. Uh, also, you're seven years old in that example. It's insane that he can flip these massively profitable illegal lotteries targeted towards children as a, an act of generosity. So I'm going to give you guys a few minutes to go place an order at shopmrbeast.com. Anyone watching any of the lives? And um, we're going to throw iPhones in some of them. And again, there are very few videos of this live stream on the internet. I think Mr. Beast probably copyright strikes reuploads. Nah, he's, he's uh, doing cleanup. That's what he's doing. But almost any clip you do find will have some new violation of internet gambling or sweepstakes speed it laws. Up. Well, I, it was, I thought it was him. I was like, keep going. <laughs> Wait, really? Let's go. Wait, it's literally like his like initial. Who is it? My cousin. <laughs> Wait, really? Actually, that's illegal. Some of the common complaints we see in threads about this live stream are that they only signed large t-shirts. So when they selected an order to give a prize, it was apparently always a large or extra large t-shirt. Uh, they kept saying things matter. like buying the next 15 minutes for a chance to win and then not honoring it. Multiple people claiming that their name was read to win a prize and they never received it. This person is still tweeting about it to this day. Now there's a lot more people complaining about the deceptive sales tactics. Reading all this really upsets me because I spent money I honestly didn't have for five shirts at different times during the live when they said things like buy now and you will get prize or money and i received two orders and nothing but shirt both with mb and one with a heart and one with a smiley i was hoping for at least a couple things for christmas for my family now this commenter also goes off. now you bought a shirt hoping counting and banking on you're gonna get money to spend for christmas Wow. So I don't know how old that person was because, again, his targeted audience is children. So, I mean, unless it was some, some kid's parent bought it going, oh, well, he can drop some money and I'll get the money. You get the shirt. I don't know on to explain that she's disabled, has PTSD. Lotteries and scams specifically target vulnerable populations like that. Yes. I'm disappointed. My son bought a signed shirt and was so excited. He watched a live stream and saw that people who bought would receive $100. He was excited to win something and be a part of his favorite streamer, Mr. Beast. When the shirt arrived, he was grinning from ear to ear. When he realized that there was no $100, he was visibly disappointed. He said nothing other than, I guess he meant everyone except me. He loves his shirt, but I'm really upset seeing him hurt. And obviously people can- Wow. 
Now, I've heard other streamers say that they have uh, they sell product shirts and stuff like that, and people contact them and say, hey, I didn't get it, you know, which happens, which happens. And there's probably a percentage of Mr. Beast, because he sells such volume. It's, it's insane volume. Uh, the merch is just insane. Uh, how much they spend, or sell, rather. How much people spend, and he's selling it. That there's going to be some stuff fall through the crack, whatever percentage that is. So whether those two cases he popped up, they it could be falling in that crack of uh, there's just so much volume. You know, sometimes things get 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 lost in the shuffle. And lie on the internet but a lot of people are independently claiming the same things like that at the end of the live stream they said they were putting a hundred dollars in every order now my speculation is that they put a hundred dollars in every order that came across the table that they signed but i'd be interested to see how they worded that if the video of this live stream ever resurfaces i, I think a lot of these claims will be proven true uh, which mr beast definitely has this stream safe he saves all his footage uh, so i'll ask you jimmy will you publish this to prove your innocence also using archive.org we can see what the website looked like on the day of the stream and while there's no mention of any sweepstakes whatsoever it does say this limited tea signed by mr beast and crew uh, but the description says it's signed by a member of the Mr. Beast crew, oh. and it doesn't say anywhere that other members will sign MB, deceiving people into believing it was signed by Mr. Beast. So here's a clip of Tyler Ford. What? What? Forging, or not, maybe not forging, using Mr. Beast's signature. So Tyler signs MB, which is Mr. Beast's signature. Then he comes in, signs his own initials, TC, smirks, looks around, and then quickly slides the shirt away. Could you make it any more obvious? You know, you don't accidentally have someone else's signature as muscle memory. And again, I'm not a lawyer. I think this is fraud. Maybe they could say it's the brand's signature, even though it's clearly implied that this is Jimmy's signature, which was established during the last live stream. Oh. Hey! MB, Mr. Beast. So this is Mr. Beast's signature? No way, this one was signed by Mr. Beast. It's just got the MB, but it, that means it's signed by Mr. Beast. That's obviously his, Mr. Beast. This is so cool. That's My obviously bad. his. Mr. Beast. You know, some people bought these shirts as collector's items or even investments, and this puts into question the authenticity of all Mr. Beast signed merch, which otherwise could have been very valuable one day. This was clearly muscle memory, and judging by his body language, he knew he exposed this. Even Tariq notices Tyler slip up and immediately looks into the camera, what? looks guilty, and then readjusts his body and rubs his hands together. Also, Mr. Beast said during the live stream, <laughs> like, oh man, let's keep signing them, let's keep signing them, I'm making money. This is the last time he'd ever sign anything, and that was just a lie. Illegal lotteries targeted towards children and selling fake signatures. I mean, imagine if any other YouTuber was caught doing this. You're oh, very smart with your money. The guy who throws away millions of dollars on YouTube videos is a gambler. Who would have thought? By this point, Mr. Beast noticed a problem with these CTA giveaways. Now, I mean, obviously, they're illegal, but more importantly, they're not as profitable as they could be. Look at it like this. There are two value propositions at play here. The perceived value of the product and the perceived value of the chance to win a prize. So for something like these $42 t-shirts, if the viewer values the chance to be in a video at $10, they need to value the t-shirt at an additional $32 dollars to make the purchase so the more expensive the product the less effective the lottery is you want to get the product as close to zero dollars as possible so people are just paying for the perceived value of the lottery that's what's most profitable because humans can't accurately comprehend the difference between one in a million odds versus one in a billion odds they both kind of just compute as i have a small chance to win uh, which mr beast is well aware of this flaw in human mental arithmetic so you're telling me i've got a chance 42 dollars for a shirt Wow. There's some parents out there with some disposable cash giving their children cre the credit card to buy these shirts. Past a certain point, the average human is like, large sum of money, click. And like, right. larger sum of money? doesn't really impact the viewing experience. So also, the larger your audience is, the more profitable a lottery will be. Anyway, Mr. Beast wanted the cheapest product possible to use for these CTA giveaways. Basically a piece of paper, but you obviously couldn't sell a piece of paper without getting backlash. So in January 2021, three months after the last shirt signing stream, Mr. Beast did a live stream where for only $10, viewers could send a picture to the moon. Oh Wait, JPEGs that are going to the moon? And of course he did more illegal lotteries. Uh, just to keep things fun and interesting, you guys are putting a photo on the moon. It's interesting enough. Someone who puts a photo on the moon, and, or, or if you buy the bundle, whatever, and the next 30 minutes, we'll just fly you down to get a video. Three years later, the spaceship finally launched, carrying beautiful pictures of deceased loved ones to the moon where they would be immortalized. <laughs> it fucking exploded. So obviously Mr. Beast refunded everyone, right? Right? Is it Mr. Beast's fault that the rocket exploded? No. Is it his fault that he advertised Okay, I don't I don't remember if he lets us know how much money at 10 bucks a pop. How much money did he make off this with kids or whoever sending in a picture which would have probably been a good project for a school program.
uh, that they're going to get a picture sent out into space, right? Uh, for science class or whatever. That would have been, that is kind of cool. But the, they're poor pictures. Did he, did he refund their money? Did he give them their 10 bucks back? I don't know. But damn. For $10, I'll put your photo on the moon. For $10, I'll put whatever picture you want on the moon. When he couldn't guarantee that? Yes, of course. October 16th, 2021, same thing. Buy this shirt to be in a video. Shopify dashboard. We just have like a, a random number generator, and then like we just put the name, number, like if there's a thousand orders, we just put it, pick the number to one thousand, and then my people give me the name. So, the first person that we're inviting to be in our Squid Game, if you want to enter, click the link in the description, buy the shirt or hoodie, is Alonzo Diaz. Oh, this is an actual hundred dollar bill. <laughs> Wait, really? Like they actually sent a hundred dollar bill. Wait, what, what? Is it say? Oh, now we have to read the message. You and your crew are an inspiration to our young ones. He wanted to send you a hundred dollars. Who would send them a hundred dollars? Uh, everyone click the link or the view product thing in the bottom left. Um, what, we're gonna open three packages and whatever's in those three packages, we're gonna give someone random that buys. Mr. Beast is the American dream. Now I'm going to get to what, in my opinion, is the most unethical CTA giveaway that Mr. Beast has done. But before I do that, I really want to drive home the point that the closer a sweepstakes is to an illegal lottery, the more money it makes. Because, you know, every customer is supposed to be informed that they can enter easily for free and that making a purchase does not increase their chances of winning. Like, you're supposed to say no purchase necessary in all of your promotional material, which Mr. Beast does not do. This legal gray area only leads to people getting scammed, especially the elderly and children, uh, who are also being introduced to gambling. The only people who benefit off of sweepstakes are influencers and scammers. Remember Wizza, a sweepstakes company that got exposed as a total scam and shut down? Even o Maze, the charity sweepstakes company got exposed to the scam and had to shut down in the U.S. Or back in the day, there was Mystery Brand. Do you remember Mystery Brand? So Mystery Brand is a website where you purchase different boxes with chances of winning things. Take, for example, this women's Christmas box. It costs $15 to open, and you can win the most expensive Los Angeles... Oh, my God. People really doing this? Spending money on this? Jeez. Okay, so, so far in the video... I mean, would you guys think that, yeah, this is kind of fraudulent and really targeted the children, which it, it is convincing. It truly is. It truly is. There's no there's no doubt about it that the, the impropriety, the, the perception of what what this guy is conveying about Mr. Beast. There's some lividity to it. Now, I'm really curious to see how all this is going to play out in, in the future. If YouTube or the FCC is going to get involved and see what's going on, on with this and, and put maybe put a stop to it. Yeah, I mean, inquiring minds want to know. Realty. But you can't even click it, okay? It doesn't even give you more information, but apparently it's worth $250 million. I love that you can't click it. Like, they're just like, trust bucks. us. There's a $250 million bucks. house with your name on it. All the way down to... Icicle, site balance. I'm willing to bet that this is probably what 99% of the people are getting. Hey, at least Mr. Beast never wanted to work with this obvious scam. I mean, at least Mr. Beast's manager never went on some podcast and talked about how Mr. Beast really wanted to work with this company. No, what's this? Is there anything you've had to say no to? Um, yeah, tons. Uh, yeah, so a uh, good example. So it was about three years or two and a half years ago when I started working with Jimmy. What was becoming really popular were these like mystery loot crate like internet sites where you, it's basically like CSGO scans, but you'd go on and be like, here's the Supreme box and you pay $50 oh, for it. Oh, yeah, like, they didn't write, write something. Uh, yeah, quite Jake a few people. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they got a lot of hate for that. Right. Jimmy was, um, he wanted to work with that company when he heard about it because there was a lot of money and we wanted to give that money away in a video and I, I had to talk him back on it. I was like, listen, we're not promoting gambling. I think people are going to see this negatively. So it was yeah. a long conversation that him and I had to have, which eventually we passed on the deal. And then Jake, Paul, and Ricegum ended up doing that deal and got a lot of hate for it. Yeah, Jimmy. So they're not promoting gambling. But isn't it a gamble to take a chance to, to, to let me buy your shirt? You're going to give me money? So if I spend $42 of my allowance, and I say I'm 12 years old, $42 of my allowance, he's going to put an iPhone in there or $1,000 or $100 or whatever those different prices he was choosing from. That's a gamble because now I'm going to spend my $42 that I saved up cutting grass to buy his hoodie <coughs> because it's the next person. Boom, 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 you know, and they're counting on getting that. That's a gamble. You're gambling that that money. Or would or would the kid bought the shirt anyway? Hey, why is your manager saying that you wanted to promote this obvious scam to your young impressionable audience? 
Mr. Beast launched Feastables, his new chocolate brand, back in January 2022. I want to tell you guys about my new snack company, Feastables. They're made with only five ingredients, but still taste amazing. And I'm kicking off Feastables with something I've always wanted to do. And random bars are going to have a mystery ticket inside of them. And if you get this mystery Five, five ingredients, guys. Ticket, we will fly you out to compete for a chocolate factory <laughs> in one of our videos. And on top of that, Chandler, we're giving away over a million dollars in other prizes for random people that buy the bars. Dude, I need to buy these. It's interesting. Oh my god, it's Willy Wonka in the chocolate factory. Who would have thought that idea? to look back at this because a large part of Feastables marketing campaign was the fact that it's a better for you brand but it's healthier for you than Hershey's. Less sugar, only four ingredients, all organic. I wanted to just make a better for you snack brand because I think a lot of the stuff out there is just terrible for you. Because obviously so much obesity and disease comes from the stuff we eat. Like Hershey's for example, there's 10 ingredients, super processed. Our, our Feastables bars are five ingredients and just all the ingredients are way higher quality. And it's infinitely better than the other options out there. I got all the Feastable chocolates. Let's try them and rank them one to six. I'm going to be completely honest. Totally not biased because if it sells more, I make more money. I'm going to be honest and I hope Jimmy is sitting next to me and not getting his feelings hurt. <laughs> Compare it to Hershey's. It's our crunch bar. Okay. This is the one you believe in. Yes. It's not crazy, dude. No? Uh -huh. You don't like crunch bars? I do like crunch bars, but again, it's so sweet. Let me try this. Maybe these are defective. Oh my like gosh, this tastes good to me. <laughs> Wait, we still be ranking them. I rated the first one, so we going completely off. No, we're completely off. We're in too deep. I rate this a 10 out of 10. I, I don't know. I hope y'all were reading his face. I, I don't think he was expecting that guy. I mean, that look, his face expressions look legit. When the kid tested and said, you know, I, I don't know, I'm not too crazy about that one. And he's like, you know, he just looks over like he's not getting what he wants. Like he was expecting the kid to just kiss ass and go, yeah, it's awesome. I get this 11 out of 10. Keep in mind, only five ingredients, infinitely healthier for you than the normal thing out there. Also my favorite so far. Okay, here's the thing. I didn't realize you were a dark chocolate guy. Mm -hmm. I'm not a super dark chocolate guy. I do love dark chocolate. I get it so 7.8 out of 10. Okay, I'm starting to understand this, man. Okay, okay. okay. I'm starting to figure this man out. You're going to like this one, right? You like salt? You I'm going to get rid of these. I just, I'm going to get rid of these. No, I want the dark No, you just don't, you, trust me. You, you like, you're a dark chocolate kind of guy. Yes, okay. I, I can read the room. The room is red. Now in 2024, Mr. Beast changed the formula again to where it has mostly the same ingredients as Hershey's and even more sugar and more calories per bar. In this initial ad for Feastables, where he called... <laughs> it's a damn. Maybe that kid had it right when he said, I don't care for these too much. So now let's up the ingredients. So he added more ingredients. <laughs> oh, shit. Calls it healthy is still getting millions of views a month. Also, I don't think you should ever advertise it as over a million dollars in prizes when more than a third of those prizes are just coupons for more Mr. Beast products, forcing you to spend more money if you actually want to redeem them. Ooh, a five now, I think there is a law where uh, you're going to claim it's healthy. I don't think he can write that on the front of it. It's the healthiest candy ever. I mean, you got to prove that, right? Dollar coupon for Beast Burger. Now a single combo only costs twenty dollars. Bob's Burgers <gasps> Palace or fucking Five Guys. If this shit can be successful, fucking Five Guys. It's so good. Who cares? It's called Five Guys. What kind of fucking name is that? It doesn't matter. Uh, the burgers are good. Branding matters. Ooh, maybe you should spend a little less time on this uh, beautiful logo and more time on making the food actually edible. Ugh. Wow. Brother, ugh. <laughs> what's that? What's that, brother? Also, be for real, dude. Uh, if Five Guys has a nice, clean, appealing aesthetic, you know, the name suggests humble beginnings. This is like a eight-year-old sloppy cotton candy. This, to me, looks like um, Nickelodeon stuff or a cartoon burger. I mean, it does look like slop, <laughs> you know. I agree. Five Guys is clean look. They are expensive, though. Five Guys are. Piss burger. It literally looks like a piss burger. Also, this digital wheel is not remotely representative of your actual odds. Mark Rober has talked about this common deceptive casino tactic before. You recall from the carnival scam video, the most lucrative games for the carnival owner are those where people overestimate their chances of winning. That is exactly what happens in this game. Thinking you were so close to getting a jackpot, when in reality, you weren't close at all. In gambling psychology, this is known as the near-miss effect. And people spend much more money to try and win because they think they can just do it on the next one. So I am absolutely peeking out on feastables. Um... Y'all can take a moment and read that. Can y'all see all that? Partnering with YouTubers and streamers are to blame. Wow. And I'm trying to do this. Mr. Beast is teaching us gambling. Minus points because there's no cool music. Anyway. Uh, let's gamble. Also, these tickets, one of them just so happened to go to a YouTube. That was pathetic. Uber with 700,000 subscribers at the time. Just pure chance. This was just tape. It was tape. <gasps> no, figure away. So it was like really t like total chance, obviously. Like you're one of like hundreds of thousands of names. Talk to Jimmy, Bell. What do you got to say to Jimmy, say thank then. you for picking us. 
No, he didn't. It was random. I was it though? Thank you for picking us. Was that a Floridian slip? I don't know. But damn. Didn't it look like the wrapper was already open? Uh, let's see. Let's see. Go, let's go right here and 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 look at the wrapper. I'm to do this. Okay. Mr. Beast is teaching us gambling. Minus points because there's no cool music. Anyway, uh, let's gamble. Also, these tickets, one of them just so happened to go to a YouTuber with 700,000 subscribers at the time. Just pure chance. This was just take. It was take. <gasps> No, did you see it open? So it is like really like total chance, obviously. Like you're one of like hundreds of thousands of names. Talk to Jimmy Bell. We gotta say this. Jimmy, say thank it. you for picking us. Let's see if I can. Uh... No, pick away. Wow. So it is like really like total chance. Gambling? Minus points because there's no cool music. Anyway. Uh, let's gamble. Also, these tickets, one of them just so happened to go to a YouTuber with 700,000 subscribers at the time. Just pure chance. This was just hate. It was All right. Look at all this was already ripped, but her hand was on the, looked like her hand was on the back side, like she's holding it like this, right? And her hand was like back here, but then it's ripped right there. I don't know, man. Then she said, thanks for picking us. No, freak away. So it was like really like total chance, obviously, like you're one of like hundreds of thousands of names. Talk to Jimmy Bell, we gotta say this. Jimmy, say thank it. you for picking us. No, he didn't. It was random. Uh, was it though? Was it random? Also, this guy went on to win the chocolate factory and extremely unlike I guess if they were sincere and legit, they could have just did a retake, right? But they let it ride. They let they let that go. Unless that was live. I don't know. But it looked like it was already open, so I don't I don't even think it was live. I couldn't even say that, but likely things do happen but uh can we see how the winners were chosen maybe because knowing how important it is to jimmy that every video has entertaining contestants through the whole video it's a little suspicious I, i'll just say in my opinion as somebody who worked for mr beast i don't think this large youtuber won to take it purely by chance also i know that producers are sort of able to pull strings behind the scenes to give some contestants better chances than others and he runs these sweepstakes to like bribe children with gambling to consume more sugar like this is far worse than a lottery ticket because a lottery ticket doesn't give you diabetes and only pay out your rich and famous friends like mr beast is bringing hundreds of thousands if not millions of new people to the candy aisle whether he wants to admit it or not people are just walking to the chocolate aisle and instead of buying hershey's buying feastables like you, people who never would have bought chocolate in walmart are walking mm -hmm. to the chocolate aisle specifically to buy feastables so, a new market. exactly yeah. i'm bringing new customers yeah. to the oh aisle God. okay he does want to admit it uh you know kind of a weird flex not something i would brag about jimmy also maybe i should mention technically i'm a certified nutritionist which really just means i paid 1200 for a course and then failed to launch a health food company well i wonder if they are out selling hershey's i don't know i i didn't look up any stats on that but I know that poor diet and especially excessive sugar consumption is the number one cause of death and health problems in America, including some of the health problems that Mr. Beast claims to care so much about. Blindness, deafness, loss of limbs. Mr. Beast also just launched a combo with Zaxby's, which if you get a soda, it's over 2,000 calories for one Dang. meal. Because obviously so much obesity and disease comes from the stuff we eat. The only thing real in this video is the new Mr. Beast box at Zaxby's. I'm pretty sure this would be illegal in Europe. This is like more calories in one meal than the average 10-year-old is supposed to consume on a day. Oh my god. That's insane. Wow. The calories in that. Then we do have a lot of obese children. Dad, blame. Every basis. Tell me how I'm killing little kids. Right. New research finds childhood obesity rates are getting worse. The number one killer in America is obesity. The number of deaths in overweight people surpass alcohol and smoking altogether. For 30 days straight, we are going to be giving away $10,000 to a lucky customer who scans the QR code on the back of any new feasible bar. It's just disappointing to see somebody pretend to care about the health epidemic in the U.S. only when it's profitable for them. I know this point isn't going to resonate with a lot of people because of how normalized high calorie and high sugar diets are in America, but like bribing children to get into the habit of Every day he's going to give away $10,000 in a candy bar? I mean, <sighs> parents out there, I mean, when y'all go into the store, how many candy bars? Are you taking them every day to buy one? I mean, or is he buying a box of them or buying a whole bunch of them and, and to open them? Hopefully he's going to get the golden ticket. That's insane. He probably don't give a crap about chocolate. He just wants the ticket.
consuming excessive amounts of sugar. Like $10,000 a day as a giveaway is very deliberate because it's trying to create repeat customers that just buy out of habits. Like doing this, especially when you clearly understand how much of a health risk it is to these kids. Because obviously so much obesity and disease comes from the stuff we eat. It, it's honestly just fucking evil to me. And I push back against this a lot while I worked at the company. For Halloween this year, Feastables is planning on putting a million dollars in a chocolate bar. And they wanted to do a bunch of like scummy marketing and shit. My manager literally said at one point that they wanted to associate buying a Feastables with your dream coming true. So they're pitching ideas like, you know, buy a Feastables, win 10K, uh, buy a Feastables out of a vending machine the vending machine just starts spitting out money, buy a Feastables and it has a ticket to Disney World, whatever, right? And I don't wanna put a lot of like hearsay into this video. You should just believe the receipts that I'm showing you and not what I'm saying. But I swear to God, I said to somebody at the company, I feel like Feastables is 70% a chocolate company and 30% of lottery targeted targeting children. And this higher up person on Mr. Beast said it was probably closer to the other way around and was laughing about it. Like 70% of lottery, 30% of chocolate company. Everyone knows- I, I can believe that. I can totally believe that. But again, him saying, okay, he's good. So he, no, he took a lot of tech to have you faked videos. No, so he doesn't fake videos, but clearly a lot of that stuff in those videos, they, they had to use CGI. They, they had some fakery. There's some fakery going on. All right. But who cares? It's just because he says there was no fakery. <laughs> now with the food and the chocolate, who cares? Right? He, he's, making millions he's selling chocolate and kids are loving it because he's mr beast the problem is is that he keeps saying he cares about the obesity problem in america but yet he partners with zaxby's and has this horrendous meal that's more calories than even a grown man probably needs in a day and you're going to give it to your little 10 year old kid and if he cared, he'd have had something more healthy that was could be still be delicious and promote good healthy. But so again, who cares if he's doing this with exact bees or the candy? The problem is, is that he said he claims that he he's concerned. He's concerned about your children and the obesity problem in America. For that matter, around the world. That's when it becomes a problem. Because clearly he doesn't. Because they look, it, there you go. It's just the call to actions and call to action giveaways, especially the drive sales. As soon as they stop, it's hard for large bargain retailers to sell the shit for 70% off. That's why they push them so hard. Once they stop the diabetes lottery, no one buys. Also, this is the website right ah. now. Mr. Beast wants you to join the crew. Just so weird and scummy to me. I believe that's interesting point he just made is that uh they stop the lottery, which he means they stop saying, hey, every day to, you have a chance to win ten thousand dollars or whatever and then there's no lottery there's no incentive or you can win the golden ticket to be on one of my shows then they stop buying it that makes perfect yes now they can't even give it away 79 cents at walmart but they have to run a scam to get them to buy it I believe all the Feastables giveaways do have official rules and no purchase necessary clauses somewhere, but it's very difficult to find them. In traditional media, if you advertise a sweepstakes like in a commercial, you have to say in the promotional material itself, no purchase necessary. Somehow Mr. Beast gets away with not saying no purchase necessary because in it's YouTube. any of his promotional materials, not the videos, the descriptions, pinned comments, nothing. To celebrate our launch of milk, chocolate, and sea salt, we went out and we bought 10 Teslas, loads of cash, and all these prices you see on the screen. And prices aside, unlike Hershey's, these bars only have four to five ingredients and just genuinely taste good. Go to peacefuls.com right now and order some chocolate. Only problem is the chocolate river is deteriorating all the cake. The only place you'll find no purchase necessary is either on the Feastables Twitter account because it's a rule of the platform and even still they try to push it. No perch neck or hidden deep in the Feastables website. <laughs> no perch neck. Yeah, them little kids ain't gonna know what that means. But it don't even matter. He's dealing with children. They're going to spend the money. Site under a FAQ. And to enter for free, you have to mail in separate three inch by five inch hand addressed written index cards up to 10 a day. Do you think kids are going to do that shit or just beg their parents when they're at Walmart for the YouTuber diabetes lottery ticket? How is this <laughs> legal? How do you mail something without making a purchase? Cards, envelopes, stamps. The free entry method can cost more than the chocolate bar itself. Also, going back to sweepstakes law for a second, payment isn't the only form of consideration. Consideration can also be time or effort that directly benefits Mr. Beast in some way. Like, I don't know, if he told his fans to clean up and organize his Feastables displays in Walmart for a chance to win $5,000. Shelfie cleanup in $5,000 drawing? They thought this was going to be- Yeah, who, who came up with that idea? What the hell? Is there any child labor laws? 
a monthly thing, uh, but I caught a lot of controversy, obviously. How can I successfully clean up the shelves? Wow, glad you asked. No bars on the shelf? Go find an employee and ask them to check to see if there is product in the back room and ask them to bring them out so you can put it on the shelf to match the tags. What the f***, dude? Imagine a seven-year-old looking for the Walmart manager so he can ask to stock shelves for a chance to be compensated? Dude, was Walmart in on this? This was not just one off-the-cuff tweet. This was like- Yeah, that's crazy. All right, Walmart workers this morning in our morning briefing, stand by the feastable owl. We could get inundated with children. Yes, that's right, children. They're going to be coming in here. They want those feastables. They are looking for that golden ticket. Like planned with instructions and graphics and everything. Also, a company asking children for selfies is a little bit weird. And while you're at it, if you want to maybe move some Hershey's bars and make sure that Feastables has plenty of space, I wouldn't complain. I just cannot believe they were going to give $5,000 to one of Mr. Beast's child laborers for stocking shelves. And knowing that Mr. Beast was like, Hey, this is a terrible idea. Uh, actually, if you said that, you'd probably get fired. This is the best tasting chocolate on earth. Good job, boys. Whoa, 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 whoa. How do we know that's the best tasting chocolate in the world? You're fired. What? This is such horse shit. You can do that? I mean, that is a bit of a stretch. Yeah. The most shocking result was that Feastables never earned anything higher than a third place ranking. But I do think their branding is like world's best chocolate bar is, um... How do, you, how do you get away with that? World's best chocolate. World's best pizza. What does that even, what does that even, what does that even f mean? Define that yourself. Yeah, I mean, I guess. But I would think you'd have to, I don't know. I. Uh, I think they could say that. I mean, nobody cares. You're gonna look at it and go, "Well, is it better than than the co than than the chocolate I ordered from from England? <laughs> British chocolate is supposed to be the best? No, no, no. You're wrong, because it's feasible, Mr. Beast chocolate, that is the best. I'm sure whoever worked on his marketing gave some thought to it or something. Okay, one last point of consideration. Prolonged attention is definitely a form of consideration. In the attention economy, it is the valuable resource that advertisers directly pay Mr. Beast for. So in these live streams when Mr. Beast says, hey guys, today we're doing a bunch of illegal lotteries, but also we're going to be giving away some free stuff to people who keep watching. He does that to boost viewer numbers. I'm going to give you guys a reason to keep watching, okay? Here's what I'm going to do. Um, randomly, I'm not going to tell you when. It could be 10 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour. I'm going to randomly pick one person watching this IG live stream and one person watching this YouTube live stream. I'm going to give you each $5,000. So Brilliant. keep watching. There's no predictable intervals for when Mr. Beast will give things away for free to people who watch. So you have to be present when they happen, which means viewers have to keep watching, which is time and effort that directly benefits Mr. Beast. The more viewers, the more money Mr. Beast obviously makes, either directly through sales or AdSense or just getting- I mean, did he do this this live stream on a weekend? Uh, surely he wouldn't have done it on a school night, because that's what his audience has got to go to bed. Well, if parents are making their kids go to bed because they got to go to school in the morning, or he did this on a Friday or Saturday night. So they could stay up all night because they got to keep watching because you don't know when that that next purchase is going to be. You're going to get 10 grand. You're going to get it. So keep watching. Being boosted in the YouTube algorithm. So even the free giveaways could and should be against the law. Mr. Beast just uses gambling psychology to exploit young children for profit. He's just become the first casino where the currency you pay with is attention. Do you think attention is the most valuable currency in the world? Wow. Well, of course. Uh, or labor or money sometimes. Yeah, his core audience is like, I'd say like 10 to 12 year old boys. Older people are a little bit over him. Some people kind of question the ethics, you know, they sometimes say these. That is insane. It's brilliant. It's like Lex Luthor. He's a genius madman, right? I mean, attention is money. I, in essence, it's true with anything. With anybody's stream, if if you can't hold somebody's attention, they're just gonna go away, or they don't like the way you look, or your voice sucks. Uh, you know, you're not young, you're not beautiful. You know, it, it depends on the demographics of the audience and how it's gonna get it appealed. So, but you take a kid. And everybody knows who the babysitter is now. It's the internet. It used to be the television. You'd pop in a video of Bugs Bunny cartoons and they could just repeat and play, right? So now it's the internet and they've got hit. He's got their attention. Folks, 300 million, 307 million the last I looked. 307 million followers. Videos, 250 mil views. A bad day. A bad day is 100 million. Probably 50 million. It's a bad day. Bad video. We can't do that again.
We got to get at least 200 mil per video. And the merch. So it's brilliant advertising. Bad yeah, boy. But there's deceptive properties here that, that is, is disturbing. And again, where are the parents? Limiting their time on the videos. Uh... Having them be more responsible with how they spend their money. And it shouldn't be because they're going to spend their, their, they cut the grass and now, because I'm thinking it's mostly boys. I don't know. Probably the percentage is young boys. They go cut the grass, whatever, or the girl went babysat. She's going to spend her, her, her money on a shirt, hoping to get 10 grand. Or go buy a bunch of candy bars. It is a gamble. It's teaching them to gamble. Instead of what the parents should be telling them. Should you be spending your money on this? Because if you do this, you're not buying nothing else for a long time. If you're going to drop your 42 bucks. Boom. You know, because it's a risk. They have Your parents have to start teaching their kids. This is a risk. There's not always going to be that return. It, that's called gambling. These videos where he like builds all these wells or you know cures people of this blindness it's almost like he's exploiting people for these views so older audiences don't love him but this tween audience they love him and they're thinking you know watching him could get me a car so why wouldn't i i'll give you guys a reason to keep watching okay now as far as fake giveaways go i'm sort of limited in what i can say without exposing confidential information and getting sued so my official statement is that sometimes things slip through the cracks and personally i believe that is intentional here's one i think he can already get sued from this video because remember at the beginning i mean he says it in the title of this video I worked for Mr. Beast. He's a fraud. Now, if this video, if it's not true, he could sue him for defamation. But if it's true, he's going to have a hard time proving it. So he's going to have to prove all of these allegations. And I don't see how he can fute it. Do you? How is he going to say he's not encouraging kids to gamble by saying, hey, you buy this $42 shirt. We're going to, next guy, all you got to do is hit subscribe. Big, all you got to do is buy this shirt. We're going to stick money in here. To me, that is gambling. That's taking a gamble. That's telling the kid, well, maybe not just hitting the sub, but the kid's going to go, man, I'm going to have more of a chance if I sub and I go and buy a shirt example where someone on reddit posted saying that they were promised free dog food for life in exchange for letting mr beast use them in a video five months later they still haven't received their dog food i actually sent this post to someone who works at mr beast and they said they were gonna send it to the pr team and then the reddit post got taken down so i don't know if it got resolved here's another example of things slipping through the cracks the second thing that i probably would do different is invest and i know what y'all about to say y'all about to go to the clip too where jimmy said that we said a certain amount of time to invest i know you talked about wanting to maybe invest 50k <laughs> all right this kid won a million dollars And this is how they dealt with this kid winning the million dollars and what the kid had to do to get the million dollars, to spend the million dollars. Okay, and then set aside like the other 23 for just other little nuances here and there. This is not me calling anybody a liar or anything because I know what, I know what y'all do, I know what the internet does. But what I think what happened was somebody that worked for Mr. Beast or something like that was probably helping me invest. But that didn't happen. I talked to Jimmy uh, when I, after I won a million dollars, after I finally like got the remaining amount in my bank account. I was telling him, I was like, man, I don't want to fail. I don't want to. So he said somebody was going to help him, said they'd help him, but he didn't want to call him by a liar or nothing. And, and now, no, no, it didn't happen. They didn't help him. Why would they not help him? Adults who won a million dollars probably need a financial advisor. If you are good with money. And we all have heard the statistics back in the day. People, these these people who've won lottery and end up losing it all because they don't know how to invest. They, they go travel the world, buy $300,000 cars, buy a $3 million home or whatever because they only have a million. Well, if they've won several million from, from the lottery. So they don't know how to, to finance and, and save and, and invest. And, you, and this is a kid? And you just gave him a million dollars? Why would you not have somebody helping him? I do have a problem with that. But it gets it gets a little better. 
be like how everybody's saying, like I'm gonna run out of money and do all this crazy stuff. I was like, man, Jimmy, please help me. And he said he was gonna help me and trying to and we was gonna invest, but yeah, that didn't happen. So I if you actually watch this video, you know, Mr. Beast does say that they're not gonna be irresponsible, that they're gonna try to set Mark up for life and that they are gonna help him with investing. What we're actually gonna do is be He has to spend that money in twenty four hours. You gotta spend a million dollars in twenty four hours. So I would think where's his parents? They need an attorney. They need somebody to sit because this is some serious money. But it's kind of jovial how it's playing out, and you'll probably see what I mean. It's like, okay, so he gets a million dollars. You gotta spend that shit in 24 hours. I mean, even a grown-up would be overwhelmed. What the hell are you gonna do? You gonna hurry up and pick a house? Yeah, you know how long it takes to find a damn house? I <sighs> Be responsible and try to set Mark up for his future. So we're gonna make smart purchases like a house, cars, and do some investing. But according to Mark, Mr. Beast only gave him an hour to plan what house to buy, and then gave him only 24 hours to spend the bulk of his money for a video. Time. I wish I would have had more time, and I wish I would have planned out stuff better. Like that was the best, best example I can give you is when uh, we had planned out the house and stuff. I literally have had an hour. He, he had somebody come to my house. I'm thinking this would have felt feel good, better story to me. Y'all tell me what y'all think. You're giving this child an hour to pl to plan and then 24 hours to go out and do it. I don't know how you can buy a house in 24 hours when you got to wait for closing and all that crap. And then you got to do an offer and all of this stuff. So right there, I, I don't know. And he, yeah, unless Mr. Beast is right there with them and that, uh, like they found a house and then, okay, they still got to find the house. Are you going to pay the guy cash, whoever's selling the house? But it would have been a, more of a feel-good story if they would have sat down with an advisor and planned this out m m a lot more than an hour. This could, could even have an even a brighter future. Now, hopefully, they had, they had let him, okay, so if I could spend, would putting it in an IRA fund, would that be considered spending it? I don't know. Y'all tell me, I, I, I'm not smart on this stuff, but the thing is, it's like, he's got to spend it, but then you're telling him how he can save and invest and all of this crap, but he's got to plan in an hour and then spend it in 24 hours. Shit, I wouldn't know what to do. And we sat down and we planned all this in an hour. Yeah, they came to my house and we planned this out in, yeah, in about an hour. So I wish I would have had more time and I wish I would have did a couple things differently on the time management side, which I guess I really couldn't help because I had to spend it. I had to spend the money and I had to like do all this. So I'm starting to think you might've been a little bit better off if you didn't make him spend a million dollars in 24 hours for content. Can I just say, I'm super glad you won the million dollars. All I need from you is a signature right here. The vehicles are yours. What we're actually going to do is be responsible and try to set Mark up for his future. You better not read it. You're a millionaire. You get time to read. <laughs> the more you show us around, the more I'm like, thank God you won the million dollars. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. So, you're selling Krabby Patties, eh? Play this is funny. That's right, Squidward. And there's a free bucket helmet with every purchase. Care for one? No. You may have hoodwinked everyone else in this backwater town, but you can't fool me. I listen to public radio. And what's that supposed to mean? It means you set up Mr. Krabs. You stole the crown so Neptune would freeze him and you could finally get your stubby little paws on the Krabby Patty formula. It was <laughs> you all along. But you made one fatal mistake. You messed with my paycheck. And I'm going to report you to the highest authority in the land, King Neptune. We'll see about that, <laughs> Inspector Loose Lips. <laughs> now activating helmet brain control devices. Uh, Mr. Beast. What? The helmets are... Mr. Beast children, kids, who subscribe to him. All hail Langdon. What's going on here? Seize him, slaves! All hail Langdon. Oh my god. This is brutal. Who can stop me now? Now be like shocked. Like have your hands over your face like you're as emotional as you can be. So like have your hand reaching for it and then like be like shocked. Like you're Yeah. Well, now act a little surprised. Like, be like really shot with your mouth open. Wow. Wow. That is just crazy. YouTube sign. Do you think attention is the most valuable currency in the world? Well, yes, attention is the most valuable currency in the world. Well, what do you guys think? 
I mean, did he? Did he scam them? I mean, when they were signing those shirts, and that guy, he's like, MB. He's like, oh, my bad. <laughs> and he, like, gets this look on his face. The other guy's looking up at the camera. I mean, it's live. They were doing that live. So, yeah, if somebody was buying them thinking that they're going to be worth money, then, yeah, that's a scam. Uh, I mean, they're hoping that it's his signature, so now all of that's in question. Everybody who's bought a shirt from Mr. Beast, you don't know if he signed that. One of his little minions did. <coughs> well, we're going to see how this turns out. <coughs> Excuse me. But let me know what y'all think about this. And parents, man, where are you? Unbelievable. This is too much. I didn't realize, I said to a couple of weeks ago, that this guy, when, when all the Chris uh, Tyson crap came out, I'm like, well, what's this all about? This Mr. Beast and all of this stuff, and I'm asking my son about it. Uh, he didn't know that she was went trans. He he didn't know that. He I just said, do you know what Mr. Beast is? And he's like, yeah, yeah, you don't need to be looking at it. It's It's for kids, you know. And how vast, three hundred over 307 million I last checked, uh, subscribers, one of the top, if not the top, YouTuber on YouTube. Which is insane. Which is insane. That is just crazy. You would think he would have a team that's helping him navigate through this crap. Because you know, the bigger you are, you are a big target. But then again, when it came to these children and Chris, and then Chris going, going trans, and he was talking nasty to little boys, there's a problem. There's a big, big problem. We all remember Pee Wee Herman, and I love Pee Wee Herman. And then we turned out, he, he was doing creepy stuff. So we need to watch out. Parents need to be vigilant. And uh, by all means, please pay attention to what your kids are spending and looking at on the Internet and try to teach them not to be taken advantage of, you know, subscribe and you get a cookie. You know what I mean? But anyway, thank you for joining me. And guys, have a great evening. Thank you.